Joseph, Barbarians at the Gate, one of the great business books of all time, is about the buyout of RJ Albert Nabisco 20 plus years ago. Now the, um, the successor company, Reynolds American, is in talks with Lorillard about a merger. What are the two hoping to get out of this deal, if indeed it comes about? Well, do you want to talk about big tobacco in the US, or do you want to talk about big, big tobacco in the rest of the world? In the US, um, Reynolds may simply want uh, the Rillard's sort of leading market share in e-cigarettes and menthol cigarettes, which are about four-fifths of the Rillard's sales, and you know, maybe that's the answer when volume is dying, literally, in the US and other developed markets. You move into these new categories. Uh, is it really to co costs? Well, I'm a bit more sceptical there. If you look at how Reynolds, for example, has um, dealt with its operating margin in the last five years, it's gone from 28% to 38%, and you know 40% is more normal for a tobacco company. Laurelard has sort of been flat at 40%, so how much back can they cut here? Uh, and then there's also that rest of the world issue. And what is the issue in the rest of the world? Which other markets would be affected by the merger of these two big US companies? Well, you, the, the point is simply that the US market functions very differently to the rest of the world. Um, four out of five smokers in the world are in emerging markets. Uh, many of them are smoking illegally, not paying taxes. Even those who do buy cigarettes uh, legally aren't paying very much taxes at all compared to developed markets. And so the game then becomes get those illegal smokers onto tobacco companies, value brands, and that you know keeps margins high even as sort of volumes overall decline. Uh, it's a very, very complicated uh, story and the US isn't part of it really. Like you know, Altria, for example, which is, has half the market in the US, was originally split off from Philip Morris International. Reynolds, uh, 10 years ago, BATS put its assets into Reynolds. It has a 40% stake uh, in the company now, largely because people wanted to get out of the US. They wanted to get out of the litigation risk which mm. attends that market. Well, as you mentioned, it's not just uh, the two companies involved who will be affected by this deal. Uh, British American Tobacco owns a big chunk of Reynolds, mm -hmm. but also we've heard Imperial Tobacco saying they might be involved in it somehow as well. Yeah, they, yeah they confirmed on Friday that they're interested in buying assets or brands from both Reynolds and Laurelard. Uh, what brands would those be? They'd be mm, secondary, really, and Imperial has a 4% market share in the US. So maybe they can buy assets quite cheaply, well, it's, you know, you know, get a little bit more market share. However, um, it will be sharing that market with the expanded Reynolds, Laurel Isle Company and Altria. And Imperial is usually like the common denominator in sort of future M&A in the industry. So for example, BATS and Japan Tobacco have long been sort of speculated as eventual buyers for Imperial. Mm -hmm. Does US exposure become an advantage or a problem in that scenario? That's what we have to kind of look forward to. Well, thanks, Joe. So obviously, tobacco has been uh, for a long time an attractive market for M&A bankers, if no one else. Looks like that's going to continue. Thanks very much.